Hello and welcome to this next part in the Yi version 2 tutorials. In the last uh, couple of videos we have covered setting up Yi and PHP uh, on the Windows box. We have covered the basic wiring up of a database and then we've looked very briefly at uh, models and at migrations. And what I want to look at in this video is to go on to the basic meat of your web application, which consists of models, views, and controllers. So in this tutorial, we're going to move on from the what we started in the previous video, which was our book database table. And from that book database table, we're going to create a model. We're going to look at how Yi creates relationships. And then we're going to look at using Gi, which is Yi's uh, generator, code generator, to generate a controller and a set of views. And we're just going to show how quick and how easy it is to use. So if you have looked at the last video, you will remember that we were using SQLite as a database. And one of the things that I've changed is I've now changed that to use MySQL. And the reason I've done that is because MySQL supports foreign keys. And one thing that I want to demonstrate is how uh, ye can use the foreign key definitions in your database in order to work out relationships and create those relationships for you in code. So what I've done is I've created a little uh, virtual machine running MySQL and I've created just two tables an author table and a book table. The exact contents are not too important, but if we look at the structure of author, we just have some simple fields here, first name, surname, and biography. Uh, just some kind of uh, little subtleties, like we're allowed to have a null biography. But in the case of an author, we have to have a first name and a surname, and we have a primary key, which is uh, an auto increment integer. So all fairly kind of normal. And then in our book table, if we look at the structure of this, we our book has a title, a description. And in this case, we have an author ID, which is an integer. Um, now, it's usually preferred to add the word ID on the end of this. And that's because the relationship that ye will create for author will actually be called author. Um, and we'll see that in a minute. But if you call this um, this name author as well, you will have a property and a function called the same thing and you'll get compile errors. So the best thing is just to put ID on the end of this and that makes it more obvious in the code uh, what's going on. And then the only other important thing, if I click the relation view here, we will see the author ID has been given a foreign key to the ID field of the author table um, and that's basically saying that the IDs in this table can only come from the author table if we set them, of course. So that's all fairly straightforward. In terms of my code in my database config, uh, rather than using SQLite, which was that, I've changed it so it now has a MySQL connection string. Uh, you can use whatever database you want, but in this case I've used MySQL and I've obviously had to add in a username and a password uh, because that MySQL is a database engine and not just a file. So other than that, this is the same as yesterday's um, or the previous video's example. So what we're going to do first is we're going to run up GI. Uh, and remember we get to that just by passing GI as the root and we come into this page which we saw yesterday and uh, the first thing we see is we have a model generator so we're going to click model generator and the model generator is going to look into our database using the connection string um, and if we actually start typing in here we can see that it already knows that there's a table called book so we're going to select that um, and that's going to be the name. The model will automatically be populated with a capital letter, and that's fine. The default namespace in this case is fine. If you're using the advanced application template, you'll need to be careful that you put the model into the correct place, whether that's front end, back end, or common. Um, and obviously, that's up to you to decide, but just be careful that your namespace is set correctly. The base class for any of the um, database models will be active record. An active record gives you a load of functions to uh, pull out relationships, to find stuff, to query things. Um, so that's basically how that works. That's all fine by default. 
The connection ID is DB by default, and again, I only have one connection, so that's all fine. I'm going to use the table prefix, even though I don't actually have a table prefix. I want to generate relations, and we'll see what that looks like in a minute. In my case, I haven't used DB comments for labels, so I'm going to leave this unticked. And ticking this means that it will generate these uh, translation, that ye colon colon t function um, for all of the strings, and that just makes them easy to translate. Uh, in, in a later video, we'll cover translation. Um, when you have internationalization, it will then ask you what category you want to use for the messages. And again, for now, I'll leave that as the default. Um, and it will tell you what it's going to base the model on. But again, I don't need to change any of that. I'm just going to hit preview. And if I scroll down the bottom, it's basically saying it's going to create me a file called book.php in the models folder. You can click on that here and it will show you what it's going to create. Um, and that's very useful, as we'll find out in a minute. And then it shows here, like we saw yesterday, if it's a new file, it will come up as green, showing it's going to create a new file. If this file already exists, it will first check whether it's unchanged. And if it has changed, it will ask if you want to overwrite it. But we'll look at that in a second. For now, we're just going to hit generate. Um, and that's all done. So we go back to our models folder and we now have a class called uh, book which extends active record. You'll notice a couple of things. It's added these PHP magic properties. And again, that's just so that your IDE can automatically prompt you for those properties when you're typing. Um, that's all kind of fine. If you add a new column to your database table, you're going to want to add that in up here, although it won't break if you don't do that. Um, and then, as we saw in the previous video, we have things like table names, various rules, and we'll look at these um, in a separate video. But you've got things like whether the field's required and what the maximum length is. And there are various other things you can do with these as well, which we'll look at. And then the default attribute labels are usually just these uh, original column names, and it capitalizes first letters. Uh, and it changes underscores into spaces and that kind of stuff. So uh, we'll leave those for now because we don't need really need to change them. And this is one of the clever things that you can do. Because we had a foreign key on this author ID table, Yi knows that this book has a relationship with an author. And in the case of our table, every book has one author, exactly one, because we only have um, one, one column to specify that in. And so what Yi has automatically generated is a function to get the author for this book. And this is really useful um, when you're building up queries and you're trying to display information on the front end where you could do things like, you know, current book, arrow, get author, arrow, get first name or whatever it might be. Uh, and so that's really, really helpful. And all it does here is it says that the ID in the author class needs to match the author ID in this class. Um, and one thing that's worth pointing out at this stage is that that class does not exist. Um, Yi hasn't automatically created it, so I will need to create that class at some point if I want to use this, um, this function. Clearly, if I try and run this and that class doesn't exist, I'm going to get an error. So Yi hasn't automatically generated the author class. If I want to do it, I could go back into the model generator uh, and do the same thing. But for now, I'm just going to leave that as is. So clearly, one of the things we're going to need to do in our model, if we need to, is add any additional rules in here. We're then going to need to make sure that the display labels are correct. We might need to add various other relationships. We can add things like um, find by ID, find by title, find by description. We could add um, all of those kind of functions in there. Um, and we'll look at that later on in another video. But there's a whole load of um, active record functions in order to do that. So that's all fairly, uh, fairly straightforward. But with no work, I have... Um, Yi or Yi has generated me a, a class which is now completely usable for what I want to do next. So that's all nice, nice and easy. So now what we're going to look at is how to actually consume this model, how to use it on our website. Um, and again, Yi does so much work for us. If we go back now to the CRUD generator, CRUD stands for Create, Retrieve, Update and Delete, which are the four actions. Um, oh, it says it there anyway. Uh, four actions that we might uh, carry out on our model. 
If you don't want to use some of these, you might want to create it and never delete it. That's fine. We can do that later. We just have to delete those actions from the controller. But what this generator will build us is a controller class and then a set of views for each of those four things. And in fact, it actually creates five views because um, reading one class or reading several classes uh, are two different pages. So we'll see that in a minute. So the first thing we need to do is specify um, what class we're going to use as our model. And we need to use the namespace for this, otherwise it won't find it. Uh, search model, we're not gonna use one of those today, but you have the ability to uh, create a whole class for doing advanced searching, but we're not gonna be doing that today. We'll forget about that. So in the in controller class, we're gonna specify again a full namespace to the controller that we want to use. And the convention would say that you use the name of the model class and the word controller, but obviously that's up to you, what you wanna call it. And again, in the view path, um, the view path it says here will default to views slash um, in this case, book slash view name one, view name two, view name three. Uh, and that's fine for us. If you want to change that, you can change it. All of the rest of these are fine by default. Again, we're going to leave this enabling internationalization ticked, and that will just make sure that all of our strings are translated. We'll leave the message category, and again, we can hit the preview. And it's going to tell us again what it's going to create. If we look at these, we can see what the code is it's going to create. That's all fine by default. Um, and one thing just to mention here, this underscore form is not a view in its own right. It's a partial view and it's used because the, uh, the view and the create and the update all are basically the same page. They all have a load of um, edit fields for this model. So rather than copying that several times, you'll notice that these um, classes here actually use the form. Uh, if you look here, it does render form and nothing else. Uh, and that, so that just enables some reuse and that is Yee's standard behavior. So again, we can hit generate here and it'll create us all of these um, files for us. Uh, and again, if we look back in here, we now have a controller. Uh, and if we look under views, under book, we can see that we have all of those views as well. So if you're not familiar with a model view controller, it's very common, but you might not be familiar with it. A controller's job is basically to describe the behavior um, of each of these different actions. So the general idea is when you call an action on a controller, for instance, action index, the controller will do some work. It will load one or more models of a certain type, in this case, book, and then it will return a certain view, in this case, uh, index. Uh, and you can see there's obviously some commonality using the words here, just makes it easier to follow what's going on, but it's up to you what you want to do um, in the case of this. It's up to you what view you want to return uh, and up to you what model or models that you want to load. So we have an index, we have a view, we have create, we have update, we have delete, um, and we have a find which is used by some of these other functions up here. Uh, and these, these do fairly standard kinds of things. If you want to delete something by an ID, it finds the model and then it calls delete on that model and then redirects back to the index. Um, again, update, finds the model, it um, uses model.load and it automatically loads all the data from the uh, view and then it saves the model and if that works it returns the same model otherwise it goes back um, and there will be errors displayed so fairly kind of standard stuff uh, we also have this behaviors function allows us to perform certain restrictions on certain actions so in this case it says that delete can only happen on a post you can't delete something on a get um, and that's just a bit of a safety measure. Um, there's a whole load of things we can do in behaviors, but for now we'll leave the defaults. And in terms of the views, if we look at a view, uh, what we've got here is a mixture of HTML, as uh, it would be in most views in most frameworks, and then various um, HTML uh, helper functions, which generate certain things like anchors, um, or in this case, We've got a detail view, which is actually a, um, a widget, a, a Yee widget. Um, some of these others, 
we'll find uh, that's using the form. If we look in the form, you see it's using a field, it's using a text input, um, it's using the translation mechanism. So a whole load of stuff that you can kind of play around with. Um, and that's all kind of all kind of done now. So the only thing that's left for us to do is to actually say, well, what does this stuff actually look like by default? So if I copy an existing one of my menu items, this is my main layout, and that's under views layouts called main.php. Um, and if I add a menu item called books, uh, I'm going to go to the book controller. So I just put the word book in there. And then I'm going to do index, which is the top level page, and save all of that. And if I now go back to my um, application, refresh that, you'll see I now have my books uh, menu item up here. So by default, this is the index page. It's all fairly technical looking. So um, sometimes you might want to spend some, some time tidying this up and making it look nicer. But it does all work by default. I can create a book, and it gives me... Um, some fields that I can fill in, um, what, whatever I might want to type in, I can hit create. Um, this is the view, the view of just one item. So in this case, I'm viewing ID number two. Um, and if I go back to books, that's now um, one item in the list here. Obviously, I can delete it, I can edit it, I can view it. So you can see just out of the box without doing any coding at all, um, just by starting with a database model, I've ended up with a whole set of um, create, read, update and delete uh, actions. Uh, and in my case, if I want to say, as I mentioned before, let's say I don't want to delete um, books once they're created. All I have to do is go into the book controller, find the delete action um and delete it or comment it out um or whatever i want to do um, one of the things that we'll look at in a future video will be role-based access control so you could actually restrict the deletion to certain users but just by deleting this action um, and then obviously removing any references to delete in each of your views you'll be able to stop people from deleting those so there's one more thing that I want to look at in this video, and that is what happens when you modify uh, your model in the database. So let's go back to our book table and our structure. And let's say that at some point um, I'm going to want to add another column. So let's add a column called ISBN for the book number, standard book number. Um, without getting into details, I'm just going to say it's a text field 32 digits long and I am going to allow nulls just for argument's sake. So I've done that. I've updated the, the table. Now what's going to happen is if I go back to my model generator and I say, well, I actually want to use um, the book table and I want to generate a model called book. All the rest of this is all the same. Um, use table prefix, generate relations, etc. If I now hit preview, what the model generator has realized is that the file it's going to create, this one here, is actually different than the file that already exists there. And if you notice this bar here, you might not be able to notice has gone orange. Uh, and that's because you can choose to overwrite the file that's already there. Now, the problem that you might have here is that if we go back to our book model, uh, imagine if you've actually edited these rules, you might have edited the display labels. So you don't necessarily want the model generator to overwrite all of that. But you've got a couple of options. First of all, you could simply overwrite it, especially if you haven't changed any of this code. It's probably easier just to get um, Yi to, uh, Gi to overwrite it. But you've got a couple of other options. What you could do is you could rename um, this class to book backup or something and you could generate a new one and then you could use those two classes to work out what's changed but even better um Guy actually has this little diff button down here and if we click on that it will actually show us what changes will be made so the green lines are new lines um, and the red lines are the lines that would be deleted so in this case there's a comma missing from the end of that so it's kind of saying i'm going to add another isbn rule um, I'm going to add an ISBN property, I'm going to add an ISBN display label um, and you can decide then either you could copy these manually 
and paste them directly into your model if you wanted to or you could just say actually it's close enough I'm happy I'm going to overwrite it and I do generate and if I go back in it's overwritten it and my ISBN stuff's come in so you've got to be a little bit careful there um, in order to make sure that you don't just automatically overwrite it but fortunately GI does not automatically tick um, the overwrite button um, and also if it's actually unchanged then it shows you that in which case you've got nothing to generate so you've hopefully now got an idea of quite how easy and how powerful Yi is in terms of generating models controllers and views um, you know clearly for some situations this might actually be usable straight out of the box in other cases you might have to spend some work um, tidying up the views um, adjusting which actions you do or don't want to be available adjusting the permissions uh, that allow you to to use uh, certain actions um, but you can see also in my sequel that the foreign keys allow allow you to create relationships automatically um, but in some of the next videos we're going to look more into active record and the types of options that are available to you as well as things like role-based access control and internationalization so i hope you've enjoyed this video any comments or questions please add them below